Hi, welcome back. So as I said in my last video, that I'll be back with a high pass filter circuit. So here I am back with this high pass filter circuit. But a bit of recap for you. So in the first video, we talked about my design plan, where I have shown that how I'll be designing my DIY amplifier setup. And my second and third video, I've decided after thorough testing that I'll be using these boards. for the 15 plus 15 watt tweeters so what was left is this filter circuit which will drive this boards for the tweeters so in this video i'll be showing you how to make such a kind of board how does it perform and how does it sound so let's get started so this is the circuit of this board and it's a fairly simple circuit and this is not what i have designed this was already available in the internet i have just tweaked some values here and there i have added this 10 ohm resistance from signal ground to the main ground power ground for this amplifier pre amplifier and the way it works is basically the high frequencies will somewhat get cut out because of the 0.01 microfarad capacitor then we are adding one gain circuit here with this 100k and 200k resistors then again we are using this high frequency filter circuit in here with two stages then we are adding this op amp to drive the output of it and that's how it works so we need two of this for stereo and the circuit kind of looks like this so only thing remaining was to gather around the components and then start soldering and after kind of 5 to 6 hours of soldering the finished output looks like this and it's kind of a big circuit and it took a lot of headache to complete it but now we will test it but before testing before testing this circuit we will first do the testing with the oscilloscope then we'll move on to the sound testing there is a reason why i'm saying this because first we have to know what is a 6 db per octave 12 db per octave minus 12 db per octave minus 6 db per octave then only we'll be able to understand how it performs so before testing we'll quickly see how this db thing works db or decibels itself doesn't have any meaning what i mean is If you say 6 dB, if you say 6 dB, or say 12 dB, it itself doesn't have any meaning. So dB is basically used for comparing values. So it's a comparing unit basically. So if I say your drum amplitude is 6 dB down from the guitar amplitude, this simply means the guitar is 6 dB louder. So just put a gain of 6 dB in the drum sound, and it will be equalized. and now one confusing part is for powers for power the formula of this db is 10 log p by p ref this is the reference to a point from where we are comparing the other value but for magnitudes for magnitudes it's 20 log v by v ref and this does have a meaning because if you come if you if you convert this p to 10 log v square by r by v ref square by r cancel the things out it becomes this and for log it's basically 20 log v by v ref so for magnitude you see it's 20 log v by v ref so we can say that for magnitudes so it's a mat minus or plus 3 db is basically 0.707 or plus minus 6 db is 0.5 half the value but for power plus minus 3 db is 0.5 so don't confuse between magnitude and power when you are talking about voltage current then we are talking about magnitudes and we we will take this values minus 3 db or plus 3 db 0.707 or plus minus 6 db 0.5 half the value now uh, crossovers are represented mainly like minus 6 db 
for octave or first order filter or maybe 12 db for octave or second order filter now what is this octave in here what does it mean or what is this first order here so for logarithmic scale say 10 hertz 200 hertz that is into 10 values into 10 values is one decade and for 10 hertz to 20 hertz that is into two values this is basically one octave so when i say my crossover is designed as minus 6 db per octave or it's a first order um crossover so first order means minus 6 db second order is minus 12 db third order is minus 18 db so like that first order is minus 6 db so when i say my crossover or preamplifier is designed for minus 6 db per octave what i mean is my amplifier reduces the amplitude of the signal to half of the value to half of its value when it's beyond the cutoff frequency so if i say my cutoff frequency of the high pass filter it's 2 kilohertz so at 1 kilohertz the value will be half of it as i said earlier minus 6 db is basically 0.5 times of the uh, main value so suppose if i say the amplified value is 10 volts here so for 10 volts i'm keeping this as the reference point so log of 10 divided by 10 is 1 log of 1 is 0 so that is 0 db here and minus 6 db is basically 5 volts here so 1 kilohertz it will be 5 volts and it is minus 6 db down from the reference value so my high pass filter reduces or attenuates the signal amplitude by half of its value after the cut off frequency so if it's a 12 db per octave crossover then it will reduce it even further more to 1 by 4th of the value so here it's 0.25 of its value so that's how it works so that's how all the crossovers are designed and this is a very important uh, factor for representing a crossover so now we'll go to the testing with the oscilloscope then we'll go to the sound testing because we'll find out what is our specification for the preamplifier so i have made all the connections now uh, the function generator connected to the preamplifier board the preamplifier is getting powered from the 1212 regulated supply the amp the utc 2050 amp the power resistors connected across it and i'm probing across the resistors here and also probing the output of the function generator and so the blue line is the output from the function generator and yellow line is the output from the preamp so our target here is not clipping definitely our target here is to get a point where it cuts off where it rolls down and we have to see per octave how much the voltage reduces now suppose for 6 kilohertz i'm setting the voltage as 10 volts i have to see what happens at 1 octave down that is at 4 kilohertz what is the voltage by that we'll get how much per octave the voltage is reducing or how much db it's down per octave so what i have done here is i have set the frequency to 4 kilohertz and i have set the v peak to peak to 10 volts our target is to see what happens at 1 octave down that is at 2 kilohertz so i'll set the function generator to 2 kilohertz and we'll see what happens to this v peak to peak one limitation to this function generator is that we have to again set the jumper here for the 2 kilohertz range so i've set the frequency to 2 kilohertz and you can see the input voltage is still the same 860 millivolts as earlier and at 2 kilohertz the v peak to peak is 6 volts 6.2 volts well it's not half of the 10 volts but it's close so now we can say that this board is minus 60 db per octave high pass filter i can again reduce the frequency here i can make it 
half of the uh, two kilowatts that is again one octave down one kilowatts and we can again check the voltage peak to peak voltage here so three three volts 3.6 volts peak to peak that is again kind of half of that what we got at two kilohertz so now we'll do sound testing and see the quality of this high pass filter board and we'll compare the sound with the filter without the filter i'll hold the microphone close to the tweeter you can see there is literally no noise in it Now I will play some YouTube safe music. So there you have it, a high pass filter circuit designed. But question is, am I happy with it? Am I happy with minus 6 dB per octave kind of high pass filter? Well, I would say I would like to see how the minus 12 dB per octave will sound like. So in the next project, instead of moving ahead with the woofer section, I will design another high pass filter with minus 12 dB per octave response. So I would say that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. Till then, bye.